Welcome back to Haunted and Historic Australia. In this episode, we take a look at Smithfield once more for the final cemetery that's hidden away. Now, two of these cemeteries I had actually not seen before because they're kind of out of the way. And this last one is no exception. Actually, it's possibly the worst of the three, being that the headstones have been moved from the graves. Now we've seen that before in Liverpool, when Liverpool Cemetery was where Apex Park is now, a playground over the top of graves. In this instance, it's the hall, it seems, that's been built over the top of the graves. I do have mixed feelings about this episode, mainly because the headstones are not where they should be. On top of the graves of the deceased they were meant for. Everywhere I can find in this research, which isn't much, is stating that the graves or the cemetery was on the same site as the church next to it. And now it states they've been put to the back of the church. So there really only is one spot that those graves could be. And that's where the hall is, the big orange brick building that's next to the church. I can't seem to find when that was established, but it's still pretty eerie. I don't like when people mess with graves. I'm not a religious person. I just don't think it's nice to mess around with graves. I'll go through a cemetery and I'll have a look at everything, but I'm not going to remove anything. I'm not going to kick or destroy or vandalize anything. Why? Well, because it's wrong. And two, because you don't know what you're stirring up. It's a crazy world out there and spirits are a real thing. I don't want to go digging up anything that I shouldn't. But yeah, much like Town Hall and Central Station and Apex Park in Liverpool, these graves have been built over the top of and only the headstones, it seems, have been relocated, which is sad, but it's something that over the last 200 years, people haven't really given much thought about when they've been building things. I mean, we hear all the time that Indian burial grounds over in America have been built over and crazy stuff starts to happen, you know. Why are we any different? So... I think if you've buried people and you've gone to the trouble of putting a headstone or at least putting paying for a plot for that person, I think in the instant you did that, you thought you were buying this plot forever and that your deceased person would have this space forever. Well, not to be. Not to be at all. Something to think about anyway. <laughs> I don't really like thinking about these things, but yeah, where will we be in 200 years, or our bodies at least? Mitch decided to go down and have a look at this particular cemetery. There wasn't a lot to look at, aside from the graves put against the fence. There is, we believe, two graves that have been untouched at the rear of the church. And they seem to look like where the deceased were actually buried in these two occasions. There is actually also an honour roll inside the church for 28 fallen soldiers from this St. James Smithfield Anglican Church or the church previously known as St. James. And they've been honoured on a roll inside the church, a plaque, a marble plaque, 28 men were killed on the front it states and it is sad when you have a look at that and you see so many names from the one family there was um, a family by the name of coleman who have got three deceased and betts who have got two deceased and it's yeah it gives you a real uneasy thought that back in 1919 when this honor roll was established and put up inside the church that people who were at that congregation who fought for this country have been 
buried here and now are left underneath a building. So it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit enough of an uneasy feeling that I have towards this particular episode. But we report on what we think people may want to see. I didn't even know it was there. So it's something that at least the Smithfield residents may want to know about or people who were from the Smithfield area, people who may have someone buried there or an ancestor buried there. Um, the gravestones are at the side near the fence, but the graves seem to be under the building or at least in the grounds where the building is. So, yeah, sadly. But they don't need their bodies anymore, I guess. It's just a respect thing in my view, you know, when you, especially when you've got people who have fought for the country and people who congregated at that church that now isn't even the St. James Anglican Church. It's another open church, I believe. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, it's just something that I guess happens when you've got a billion people <laughs> living in a country over centuries. It must happen all over the world, not just here, I guess. But, yeah, I just thought a bit odd that we would um, we would do that. We as a Australian people, everybody equally, I'm, I'm, I didn't do it personally. I'm sure most people watching this haven't, but it's one of those things where you just kind of, you're guilty by association. <laughs> but without further ado, enjoy the footage of the headstones and around the church that Mitch has gone in and had a look at. Uh, yeah, we didn't know where exactly the graves are. They're not, um, I suppose you'd have to request plot access and then even then it's probably going to be a touchy subject because it's under mostly under a building. But it's uh, they're still paying tribute to the people that are there. The headstones have been concreted into the ground um, to the side. So there are headstones to see. It's something if you are curious at all to go and see. But it's, um, yeah, it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. Enjoy. Until next time.
Ossi Meir.